Hello and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and today let's find out what's been on the hook. Lots on my hook. I hope you're having a great crafty week That's last week and a great crafty weekend and looking forward to a great crafty week this week. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for all my new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying your time with us here at On The Hook Crochet. I have enjoyed seeing all the subscribers show up. It's so wonderful. Be sure to go back and look at some of my older videos if you want to. If you get bored, you can click on some of those. There are 350 or 400, I don't know how many now, uh, videos that you can watch that have different projects in each video. They're not uh, continuous uh, from one to the other, not always. Usually they're self-contained and so I might talk about one pattern, one sweater, one top, one cowl in that particular video and you can see how I made it, what I used to make it, where I uh, bought the yarn, where I found the yarn and why I decided to use the yarn, what kind of hook I decided to use and all that in the video and the patterns are all available on my Etsy shop. I'll put the link to the Etsy shop down in the description box so you can find it if you'd like to take a look and when I mention a pattern on my show I always put the link to that particular pattern so you're not scrolling through my shop trying to find the pattern that I was talking about today so all those links are down in the description box and if you never look in there you should I give a little synopsis of the video that I'm doing I also put all the links of interest in that description box so if I talk about a diamond painting or uh, a storage system for diamond drills or some kind of yarn where I bought my yarn if I bought a new pattern from someone else all those links are always in the description box if I mention a YouTube channel I will put the link to the YouTube channel in the description box so be sure to make use of that I spend some time every video working on that set of links just to be sure that I put all the links there so you can find them easily. Also, I always list the giveaway rules and the rules are down in the description box how much the uh, gifts are worth and how much shipping is estimated to be. All that is down there because that's what YouTube requires. But none of my giveaways are sponsored by YouTube just so you know that. Now, let's get on to our show. Today, I have a couple of acquisitions of yarn that I have received in the last few days and a couple of things I'm doing with them as well. Also, um, I want to do my what I'm wearing session with you and I want to show you this in full view. Also, where the pattern can be located and a little bit about diamond painting. Now, my plan, if I follow through with my plan, my plan is to shoot a video hopefully this week and show you where all my diamond paintings are in my home. I have embroidery on the walls, I have paint on, painted uh, pieces that I've done on the walls, painted pieces by other people, diamond paintings galore on the wall and uh, I want to show those in a separate video because if it was in this video it would be too long and I don't want to stretch this video out too far. I, I know that y'all like my long videos but when they get to be 55 minutes or an hour they don't load very quickly they take all afternoon to load onto youtube and it's just it just slows me down so much so i thought i would just try to keep these to about 30 minutes 35 40 minutes at the most and we'll see where we go with that today what i'm wearing today is the i think this is a blast from the past that's what this is a blast from the past this is a cotton fair top that i made at least a year ago maybe two years ago i don't really know but i made this top uh, from cotton fair yarn It's still available on the premiere site and other places i think even on amazon you can get cotton fair yarn and it's all cotton It's very very comfortable now I'm wearing this with a tank top underneath because the stitches are very far apart and this is back when I thought that was okay and I still do but most of the sweaters I make now the stitches are much closer together so I can just slip them on I don't have to wear a tank top underneath now this is the America tank if I if I'm doing it right I think this what this is this is America tank and uh, I made the sleeves and everything just the same but the edging around the neck and the sleeves and the bottom is actually different as well. The bottom is done in a lace um, 
pattern so let me show you that I'll stand up and let you see the whole thing okay this is my America top made in cotton fair just like the America top is made but in a solid color and different edging around the neck and the sleeves it's just sim simple uh, single crochet maybe four or five rows around the neck and the sleeves the bottom is done with a lace I'm trying to pull that down so you can see it it's a lace bottom it's probably about three inches maybe two inches wide at the bottom all the way around and that gives it a little bit of a special look now I'm wearing it like I said with the tank top the tank top is flesh colored so it is a light kind of a light tan and it, it blends with my skin pretty well so I can wear this top and it looks like you know uh, you can't really see through it <laughs> but here's the back this is what the back looks like and I'll pull that down so you can see the lace the lace goes across the back as well so again this is a an American tank made with a solid color cotton fair with a little bit of different edging around the sleeves and the neck I hope you like it I really love cotton sweaters in the summertime I will talk about that in just a minute I have something else I want to show you as well but this is the um, one of the first blouses I made with cotton fair I believe I made this after I made the tank top the America tank but still uh, I made them at the, pretty much the same time, one right after the other. But I'll try to put the link to the uh, to the video where I talk about the America Tank in the description box. So you can click back there and look at it, or I might put it at the end of this video. You can see the little uh, thumbnail in the upper right corners where I try to put it so that you can find it easily. You just click on that and look at that video as well. But that's where I describe, I think it was how I built the America Tank. <clears throat> and one of my very first patterns just love it i i really would like to make this again in a very light cotton yarn now <clears throat> I'll, I'll tell you about that in just one second but first of all i want to remind you to put on your calendar wednesday this coming wednesday on the 17th of august i will be on linda simpson's uh, youtube channel she is a knitter crocheter um, wonderful lady just so sweet and so casual and she's from Britain and she's going to interview me Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern so if you're central of course that'll be earlier but 4 p.m. Eastern and uh, she's gonna ask me some questions and we'll just chit chat it'll be fun and it'll be the first time I have ever appeared live on a YouTube channel I've never done that I've never done a live of my own I've always been just been too um, worried about how to do it first of all I don't have anyone to help me with the technology and uh, I, it may be very very easy and I'll probably ask Linda how to do it after all this but she said she would send me a link and I could click on that and I could be on her channel we'll see how that works out but I'm excited to uh, be on her channel so be sure to tune in on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern and if you can't she will have the replay available on her site and I think she's going to send me a link to that as well so if you want a link to the Linda Simpson interview, it'll be on her channel. Probably easier to find it there, but I'll put it on my channel somewhere as well. So you can check it out. Um, it'll be fun. I hope to have a good time. I'm sure Linda will um, be easy on me. Maybe she won't ask me too many hard questions. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. Now let's move forward with our show. This is the Rebecca sweater that a lot of you have bought the pattern for. I hope you're doing well with it. Um, I really love this pattern. It is so easy to make. It has a little bit of a special lace detail up here at the top. It's very easy to do. The sleeves are simple as they could possibly be. This is the Rebecca sweater. There's the back and the lace goes all the way around and it gives it just a little bit of a special look. It's not difficult. It's not color blocking. It's not specialty stitches at all. This is very, very easy. A beginner can do it. And I tell you how to measure yourself and make this top down sweater very easy for you to do. And this is the pattern that I, that I wrote. I designed the Rebecca sweater. There I am wearing it. And I, I've already made this one other time. It's the yellow daffodil um, sweater. There are probably four or five thumbnails out there, videos that I made while I was working on it. It was too big, and then I added more to the neck and all that drama that happened a couple weeks ago. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I put some videos out about that so you can find them if you just go through my video feed. But that was a Rebecca and so is this a Rebecca and this one is my go-to Rebecca. It's a beautiful color and it's easy to wear. It's very, very soft and it's not hot. So all those reasons I wear it, I'll be wearing it the rest of the summer and probably into the fall as well. This would be really cute under a blue jean jacket or a black jacket to church, something very kind of special. And you can see this much of it. That would be really nice for a dress up look. Now, uh, thank you, Crystal. She's such a great model. I just really enjoy having her in my studio. She is so willing to just wear whatever I ask her to wear. Now, the other day in the mail, I received my Knit Crate Malabrigo Quarterly Crate. Now, this is from Knit Crate, and it, it comes every three months. It has three skeins or three hanks of yarn of whatever they decide to send you. You don't have a choice, but it's always something quite gorgeous, and, and it's not too much out of the way for people to say, oh, I hate that color green, or, you know, they don't really do that. They send you nice, even colors or neutral colors, very sweet colors like blues and pinks, nothing out of the ordinary. So when you receive your box, you're not, you know, in a panic knowing you're not going to ever use that yarn. Well, I received mine on Friday, on Friday, and I started a project on Saturday. I went downstairs and I rolled up the yarn that I received, and this is what it looks like. This is a Pima Cotton, beautiful DK. It's called um, Verano, and the colorway is cl Glass Future. I don't think that anyone else has this color. I think just Knit Crate probably um, signed on for this color because it's uh, in my crate it's called the glass future that's the theme of this box and it's talking about technology and all that and see the colors are you know sort of similar to that I think I don't know why they chose these colors but this is a beautiful color here it's gorgeous 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 on the back of the pattern it gives you a QR code that you can um, place your phone up to and it'll give you the patterns for the uh, particular yarn that they send out and also you can go to a website and it tells you where to go and you can go there and get your uh, free patterns for this particular yarn. I haven't done that yet because I already had a pattern that I was going to use for this particular yarn and that's why I brought Crystal over to show you the Rebecca sweater because that's the one that I'm using for this yarn. Now they gave me three hanks and one, I balled up two of them. I've already used one. I've already finished using one and I started a Rebecca sweater and here it is. This is the yoke. I'm finished with the yoke and I'll be starting the underarm um, the break for the break point I call it the body break or whatever you want to call it where you attach a chain to this end and this end and then your arm will go in there underneath that chain so it'll go over the chain underneath the yoke so what I'll do is I'm going to try this on for you if I can find the find the center back here it is I've gotten really much better with joining my lines here you can barely see where they're joined right in there. So what I do is I slip stitch into stitch number one of the round and then I tighten up that um, slip stitch tight chain one and I flip it around and go on the other side and to me that just I like the rows the way they look better than just going around in a circle but of course that's a very uh, easy to do and, and it's certainly fine to do. Now this is what it looks like okay this is <laughs> my camera fools me because it's right as left and left is right all right so let me get that down there see now I'm ready to add the chains under the arm and I'll be grabbing this in back in there it's, I'll chain up probably 10 or 14 10 to 14 chains like I talk about in the pattern you have to decide how far you want the pattern to stretch the yoke so that your yarn your arm can go through the hole but it's not too big so you want to um, take a stitch marker and hook it from here to the other side and I show you in the Rebecca sweater pattern how to lay that out and make your measurements and so 
that way you're not guessing but you should always try on your sweaters as you're making them now the last few rows I did not do any increases here so the sleeve is not sticking out as far as it was on the last one that I made so you have to kind of practice and judge um, how you want the sweater to look on you and then just um, decide the last few rows what you want to do if you if it's already wide enough then just do some rows to get the the length down of the the length of the yoke down far enough for you to attach your chain to the underarm and then you will crochet around the chain and that bottom part of the sweater it's not hard at all to do there are no seams on here there's no sewing all you do is crochet and it's not hard to do and if you do a row different than it says in the directions, don't worry about it. <laughs> there are no stitch counts in my patterns. So you can absolutely have as many stitches around. I could have 150 stitches or 90 stitches around here. It doesn't matter to me. It does, shouldn't matter to you either. All you want to do is use your measurements so that you have the exact measurement you want for your yoke when you finish making your yoke. And so that's where I am right now. It's usually about 8 inches from the neck down to the bottom of the yoke. Uh, my measurement, my good measurement is about eight inches. And then I can chain and join the other side. And then I try it on again. I make sure that my arms will go through the holes, that the yoke sits right on my shoulders, everything is right. And then I do a couple of rows around um, using the chains, going through the chains, going all the way around that next round and then I try it on again and I make sure that the yoke is perfect if it's not I rip that out I've ripped out many a yoke last two or three uh, rounds so that I can get that to fit just right and so that's what I'm doing with this one I have a pretty good idea of where I have to stop in order to get those chains to fit me underneath the arm and so I'll look at those chains and if I need four inches under the arm I chain up to four inches it's it's not hard it's not hard to do at all and this is one of the easiest sweaters that you can make from the top down so honestly I, I don't use the um, raglan sleeve pattern but I would like to come up with one uh, in the next year I want to start uh, offering raglan sleeve top-down sweater patterns for my viewers and subscribers and so that's probably what I'll be doing next year I'll just one of the things that I have on my list that I want to do next year now also the fall lookbook is coming out in a few weeks I'm finished with two or three of the projects I think three now of the projects and I'm just really excited to to, to uh, put this out for y'all. I may not have as many patterns as I originally planned. I always plan huge, and then I had to pare it down a little bit. Otherwise, I would be October before I could get it out. So I want to go ahead and get it out, uh, hopefully by mid-September or maybe before. I'm hoping that I can do that, and that way I can uh, get that out to you. You can make whatever you want to on it. Uh, you might want to use one pattern. You might want four patterns, and there'll be various patterns in there they won't all be sweater patterns they won't all be sweater patterns now back to my Malabringo box that I started a long time ago this is the extra that was in it it's a little zippered pouch that says knit crate on it so it's really cute I can certainly use that I love these pouches anytime I've got a project bag I like to stick a pouch in there so that I can put my uh, crochet hook and my uh, measuring tape and all that in there so that I'm not digging around looking for it. Now this cotton yarn, let me look at this one more time, this is 205 yards on the hank and it is DK weight and they also say worsted on here so they have worsted slash DK. My guess is that it is um, a little bit bigger than DK because it does look kind of big. It's a little bit bigger than DK. See my finger there with it? it's it's you know a little bit wider but it it crochets up very nicely I hope that it will um, after I block it it will really calm down and not be too stiff in fact it's not very stiff now really honestly it's not that stiff and it's going to be um, probably as comfortable as the one I have on from Cotton Fair yarn that I made from Cotton Fair Woo! I'm getting tangled up here <laughs> anyway that is one of my projects on the hook not involved with my fall lookbook but I just had to get started on that I just really wanted to make it plus it's a summer sweater so I wanted to do that now so that I will 
uh, have it to wear at least for the rest of the summer and that's going to look great with jeans I can't wait to model it for you and hopefully by next week I may have that finished I'll probably have it finished because I'm just on a bead I want to do that now I'm also using an eye hook to make that this is I think I used an H hook for my um, Rebecca sweater from the merino wool I used an H hook but this is an eye this is a 5.5 millimeter uh, let me find it here it is 5.5 millimeter uh, clover hook love it love clover that's my go-to hook so that'll go right into that box with the other things and that is my new Rebecca sweater another note about making more than one of my patterns making more than one time the uh, what I do is I will get a little notebook out this I got from Nick Crate isn't that cute it's very cute this is a you know it's a paper front but it's a little notebook that you can write things down in and so when I started working on this particular Re Rebecca I labeled it Rebecca in Malabrigo Pima Cotton from Knit Crate. I just write it at the top. This is how I made it. All right, and then I chain 80 with a J hook, and then I leave a long yarn tail. And let me show you why I do that. Let me get it back out here because if you, if you haven't bought the pattern yet, you won't know what I'm talking about. The back of the sweater is here. All right, this is the back of the sweater. And what I do when I start now this is just this just works for me I chain up like I said in my instructions I chain 80 and then I leave a long yarn tail probably about you know 8 or 10 inches long and I make my slip knot right here okay so I have a long yarn tail and I have a slip knot here and then I chain up with the working yarn I chain up 80 or however many it is and then um, I turn and I do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and I single crochet all the way to the beginning of the chain 80 and that takes me back to this long tail all right then I slip stitch the front and the back the first crochet the first single crochet to the last single crochet so it makes a circle and it's a lot easier to do than just doing a chain so I do a single crochet row first and then I slip stitch the ends together and you can easily see if it's rolled over or not I always roll mine over I have to rip out so many times I just decided to do it this way then you chain one turn and do you, whatever stitches is you're doing for the sweater so in the case of the Rebecca sweater it would be a double crochet so you would do a double crochet row so you do a few rows and then when you and I haven't done it on this yet so if you can see that I'm going to show you that see there is the single crochet row right there and there's where I connected them and what I'm going to do is take this long yarn tail right here and I'm going to sew this together right here and I'm going to bring that together and that will uh, be like connecting them at the chain end the chain round and it, it sounds complicated you can do that anytime you want as, as soon as you finish that first chain, single crochet round you can sew it then you just whip it onto the first single crochet from the last so there's where you would go there right there see you would attach those together and then you would uh, just tie this in you know use your darning needle and hide this yarn end and there you have it so it makes it a little bit easier for me to start otherwise I can chain up and have to rip out four or five times because I twist my chain as I'm trying to get it slip stitch especially if it's a long chain like 80 like I did for this particular one so there I would have the the hook the name of the hook it's a J hook to chain 80 and leave a long leave a long um, leave a yarn tail right there and then you switch to an eye hook and this is row one single crochet row two double crochet row three nine double crochet increase so that means I would do nine double crochets and then two in the next stitch nine double crochets two in the next stitch all the way around and so I do that for every row here and if you want to take a picture of that you certainly can now down here I'm just experimenting so I did the last three rows in half double crochet I changed over to half double crochet right there on row nine I did a lace row I did the two lace rows see there's one lace row there one lace row there 
but I changed to half double crochet. I did a double crochet increase, six double crochet increase, and then a lace row, and then I changed to double crochet there, and then I changed to half double crochet here. So I did one row of half double crochet there, just to tighten it up a little bit, and then I did some other rows as well. So that's what I do when I make a sweater from one of my own patterns. I, I can on the pattern actually write this or I just had this pad handy so I went ahead and just used my pen and on every row that I finish I do a check mark. So I kind of plan ahead. I say oh I'm going to do a 6, a 6, a 12, 12, 12 and that way I kind of have a, a road map and when I get there and I finish the lace row for example I check off right there. And so I know that I have five or six more rows to go. And when I finish each one, I check it off. I'm interrupted a thousand times a day. And so I cannot just remember where I was. I'm not going to do that. It's really... Uh, saves your brain power because you don't have to keep going back and remembering where you were. So uh, that's how I keep track when I'm in my chair in the living room. If I'm watching TV or something, I can just mark it off and then I know the next row exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not always counting one or where that last increase was. And you need that because when you're crocheting you need lots of brain energy. Now as you know I'm doing my fall lookbook. It's a collection of patterns that will be coming out. One of the patterns I'm using, home spun. I'm using home spun. This is a beautiful home spun. This is harvest. It's not available anymore. Now I saw a color at Hobby Lobby this week um, that was very similar to this only there was no green. It had this beautiful orange color and kind of a cream color of all mixed up and homespun is available at Hobby Lobby. It's called something else. Um, it's called home something. I don't know what it is but I should have written it down but I didn't. I was just walking by and I thought you know that doesn't have any green in it but it looks very much like homespun. So they do have a similar yarn to this at Hobby Lobby if you don't want to get uh, yarn from Lion Brand. I love the Lion Brand yarn. I've, I've not tried the Hobby Lobby so I don't know what it's like. It looks just like this particular yarn. But as I told you I was at the Mary Maxim website and they had homespun on sale and I thought I'm going to try this. This is called I think it's Pink Diamonds. Yes Pink Diamonds and this is what it looks like. It is gorgeous. Love it. It's purple and pink. Look at that. And there's a lot of gray in there too so it really tones it down quite a bit that is beautiful i love it now the pattern that i'm designing i i'm not going to show you the pattern but i will show you a piece of it that i have started with this new homespun because i finished the one in this color and i'm sure i'll be um, taking photos of both colors because i've started another one in this color this is what it looks like. Now it started out as just a really nice kind of a, a purple right there. Kind of a purple look and then it turned gray and there's a lot of gray in here. There's just a lot of gray and then there's a pink stripe. So I think what it's going to be is pink stripes, purple stripes, <laughs> which I'm not a stripey person. I hope I don't have to color correct on this or I can just let it go and get over myself. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but this is this is a large piece. So um, I will just let this kind of set the tone for the colors, but I just thought that was just beautiful. I love homespun. And it is not difficult to crochet with if your pattern is very, very simple. Now I'm using a K hook for that homespun. It is a 6.5 millimeter, and my favorite clover hook. This is one of the this is one of the plastic hooks. Um, they change over from metal in J, uh, and then when they go to K, they change into plastic because the metal would just probably be too heavy. So uh, it is easier on your hand. It's very easy on your hand and my favorite hooks. So I chained up on this particular piece with an L hook which is the one step up from this and then I continued on with a K hook and it's really turning out nicely. I really love it. I love homespun. I've not always loved it. <laughs> I think because I was trying to make things that were too difficult to see your stitches. So on here you're not going to have to see your stitches. You can feel them as you go across. It's not difficult. 
And once you get the hang of it, it's very, very easy to use. So those are my two acquisitions, the Malabrigo uh, crate, which is a box of uh, three hanks of Malabrigo yarn, and then the homespun that I, uh, I found at Mary Maxim. So I'm going to show you a little tiny video of my diamond painting progress this week. For those of you who are following me on the Angel playing the flageolet. This is a very quick look at what I'm doing here. I will put a picture of, if you're new here, I'll, I'll put a picture on the side here of this entire diamond painting because you can see up here, I uh, am not seeing the whole picture while I'm working on it. I have it on a, an easel. So I have actually finished all the way to here. This is the bottom row. I'm doing this in three inch increments and each square is about that big and each night or every other night I can move to the next square. So I'm finished with this bottom row right here. Try to go slow so you can see it. And now I have started up here on this three inch row, three inch square I should say. There's the plastic that covers it. I have it pull, hold, held back with a cover minder and then here I've pulled back this one to show you where it starts. Right there and I have my washi tape along the edge so I can see where the edge of that plastic is when I'm working on the actual diamond painting. So I see I have a few more holes here that I haven't filled in. So I'll be doing that tonight, finishing that up and starting this one tonight. So I wanted to show you how this looks. You can't even see this plastic when you let it go. If I move this out of the way, move that out of the way. You can't even see. You can't even see the plastic. <laughs> and I know a lot of people, I do know diamond painters that edge the squares with washi tape, every one of them. That's just way too much trouble for me. I'm not going to do that. So this is the way I do it. It makes it easy. And I see I'll have some holes along here. That's not uh, a break in the action or anything. That's just some holes right along there that I haven't filled in with diamond drills. So this is a quick look at my diamond painting, my angel playing a flageolet. There it is right there. And this is by Edward Byrne Jones. I don't know how many times I haven't told you that, but the artwork and the painting was done by Edward Byrne Jones in the 1800s. So this is what it looks like. And again, I'll show you a picture of the entire piece. Can't wait to finish this one. I hope you enjoyed that little trip to my diamond painting table. I diamond paint every day. I really enjoy it just for a short period of time at the end of the day and I diamond paint till I uh, kind of burn out and then I stop but I am keeping my time with my hours tracker app and again you can uh, get that on your phone. It's free app hours tracker and um, you can put in the job that you're doing. It's like a project and you just type it in and you keep up with your time by turning it on and off. It's very easy on your phone. You turn on your phone when you sit down to diamond paint or crochet and then when you're finished you just tap your clock out and it keeps your time for you and your total time you can see how much time you spent making that sweater or doing that diamond painting. So it's really great. I use it for all of my projects now. Not my crochet so much but mostly my diamond painting just so I can tell people how long we have to invest in um, a particular diamond painting. So there you go. Now let's talk about giveaways. Last week or the week before last I called out a couple of giveaways of people that I have not heard from yet and um, Rita Woods and Dale Anna Young. You might want to watch my video from a couple weeks ago. Um, just a tip if you're watching this one. If you don't see it and you don't claim your gift, then I will next week uh, pick another winner for those two. And those were for the Sheep Cheese Stone Yarn and the Knit Picks Yarn. And then also the Willow and Lark Yarn. And there were some keywords in there as well. So. Um, We'll give those away next week if I don't hear from uh, these two lovely subscribers. So be sure to get in touch with me. In Cole Yarn and the Pattern of Choice were already claimed. So today is a big day. Today is a big day. The day that we select the winner for the Mary Maxim Afghan kit that I'm giving away in honor of my 12 thousand subscribers goal that we met and thank you so much if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be there I wouldn't be here at all 
I wouldn't have a YouTube channel. So thank you for tuning in. I so appreciate it. And thank you for supporting me for all your beautiful comments that you make. And I, again, I know I say that every week, but I really mean it from the bottom of my heart. Now, the first, the first gift that I'm giving away is the Esther Bunny Frog or Finish. And a lot of you said you wanted it. This is the pattern. It's so, so cute, but I just can't, I can't do it. I just can't do it. And I even changed the yarn to the um, Caron blanket yarn and I've finished part of the bunny. I showed you what parts I finished. This is the body. This is a big, 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 big bunny as far as I can tell. It's going to be this big plus all the legs and feet and head and nose and all that business. So this is the head that I've s sort of finished but not really about halfway through the head. So it's going to be a big bunny and I'm going to dig around and find some more blanket yarn. I think I have some navy as well, so I may throw that in there. I won't be using it anymore, so I think I'm going to go ahead and give it to a lucky winner today. And I'm going to send the pattern along with it so you can see where I ended up with that. Also today will be the Afghan kit. So first of all, let's give away the bunny. So the keyword there was bunny. Let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins these two gifts? Here we are at the computer and there is the internet address for the video two weeks ago when I asked y'all to sign up for the Frogger Finish Bunny and the Maxim, Mary Maxim Afkin Kit. So first of all, let's give away the bunny. Here's the bunny and we're going to answer a question which I did and then let's find out how many YouTube comments we had that included the word bunny. So. That would be 176. So 176 people signed up for the bunny. <laughs> if you don't want to finish it, I totally get that. So let me go up here and let's find out who wins the bunny frog or finish. And that would be Deanne Spencer. Deanne Spencer, you have won the frog or finish bunny. I hope you uh, will enjoy finishing that bunny and send me a picture please when you do all right now you can also frog it out and make something of your own whatever you want to make so that's totally fine with me all right so Deanne Spencer congratulations you've won the bunny now let's go back here and we're going to we're going to type Mary in here Mary M-A-R-Y which was the keyword for this particular giveaway and this is for the Afghan kit and there were 320 people that signed up for that <laughs> I think more people wanted that than the bunny I totally get it all right here we go we're going to find out how which person wins the Afghan kit from Mary Maxim loving this kit Autumn Eidson Autumn Eidson and there's Mary Maxim, of course. She uh, loves their kits and yarn. So, Rebe Autumn, you have won the 12,000 subscriber Mary Maxim Afghan kit. Congratulations. Congratulations, Autumn Eidson. Well, Deanne and Autumn, congratulations on winning these gifts today. I didn't show you the Mary Maxim kit, but it's the crocheted stripes throw. That is a... A gift won by Autumn Eidson. Autumn, you have won this gift. So be sure to send me your mailing address so I can get this out into the mail for you. I'm excited about sending that out. I am totally there. It's so exciting to send out nice gifts like that. And the bunny's good too. Hey, you know, I'm going to throw in some more blanket yarn. I have been out of town this week. I had to go uh, do some business somewhere else. And so I wasn't in my office but I was doing a lot of crochet I took four different project bags and uh, I finished a couple of things I was so proud that I finished them on my trip so I didn't have to do it here at home but I do have to uh, write the patterns and everything for it but I did finish the prototypes so I was excited about that and when I arrived home there was a package waiting for me with the homespun yarn and something I would ordered for uh, one of my subscribers. I, I want to give this away next week and we're going to call it winner and the keyword is winner w-i-n-n-e-r and this is the Mary Maxim Afghan Contest Winners book 
and this has several Afghan patterns in it that were sent in to Mary Maxim and they had a judging the contest they judged it and they decided who would be in this beautiful book and here are all the Afghans that they show in the book and have the patterns for in the book these are absolutely gorgeous this is a really pretty Afghan too I don't love real uh, difficult patterns but none of them are advanced they consider them all intermediate let me get those up there where you can see those beautiful patterns look at that and they use all different yarns too I've been through the book uh, they use Red Heart Super Saver uh, whatever yarn the prototype was made with and the designer's name is is in here too as well and the patterns and some of them are not too difficult if you follow the directions you'll be just fine it says intermediate but I think some of these might be fairly easy but I would start out with an easy one you start out with an easy one and make two or three of these these are just gorgeous it was it was very well worth the money there are eight patterns in here again this is the Mary Maxim Afghan contest winner and if you want to sign up for this for next week use the word winner in your comment and you will be in the in the running for this book now in the back are some general directions which I love when a book has these general directions on how to do a stitch if you've forgotten how to do a stitch then it's right here in the back of the book and you can refer to it there or you can go on the Google and uh, type or type in YouTube and uh, ask a question you can definitely get an answer there some of these look difficult but several of them look easy and one is actually labeled easy so it probably is very easy to do so there we go this is one of my favorites this is the easy one this is called the garden of hope blanket isn't that beautiful and actually they featured it on the front what am i saying <laughs> no wonder i liked it so much they featured it on the front use the word winner as your keyword in your comment on this video and uh, you'll be in the running for this beautiful book for next week so I hope you have a wonderful week be sure to like this before you click away please like this video give it a thumbs up so easy to do don't forget my interview on Wednesday be sure to tune in for that into Linda Simpson's channel and I'll put the link down in the description box for you it's at four o'clock on Wednesday the 17th of August 2022 so if you've missed it if this is 2023 or something when you're watching my video go back and look at it it's uh it's gonna be fun I'm gonna have a good time I'll answer some questions and we'll chit chat so uh, it'll be a, an opportunity that you can actually put chat in the box you know how you do on a live so you can make a comment or ask a question or something in the chat so uh, I'm looking forward to it it'll be my very first time live and it might be fun you never know so winners be sure to send me your mailing address be sure to put winner in the subject line so that I can find your email and get this out to you these two prep these two gifts are very exciting to send I'm so excited to send those out this week so I hope you have a wonderful week have a great weekend next weekend and join me on Monday when we find out what's on the hook <laughs>